and welcome to a brand new video. Today we have a very interesting and topical subject. The subject of AI in video games. I am once again joined by my friend Steven Nonsense from the channel Steven Nonsense and his perfectly not normal number of fingers. How are you today Steven Nonsense from the channel Steven Hashtag Ampersand Nonsense 20 Slash Percent Twenty percent? What? Sorry, hey, Unicom. parsing RL error. Unicom and uh, viewers um, as, uh, as, as you would have already seen uh, by the title and thumbnail hopefully um, this super special episode of uh, Game Tales uh, will be around, uh, you know, this, um, as per usual, we are very current in our uh, coverage of uh, news, of digital tech news, and we're, we're going to talk about AI, uh, especially, you know, uh, the, the things that we mostly have access to, uh, we're going to talk about uh, a bit about uh, ChatGPT, we're also going to talk about about this new fangled ace thing that nvidia revealed and uh we'll definitely delve into some other adjacent um topics um, keeping in mind uh, neither of us uh, is um, some some form of um, scientist in the area um, but uh, we both have our own uh, sort of uh, specialities that <laughs> allow us to do um, to do some of these opinion thingies uh, relatively well now so yeah we have to start by uh, saying that the quotation marks on the ai bit aren't nearly as big as they should be we are nowhere near an ai we're we're at the the machine learning stage where we feed something a bunch of data and tell it hey it's supposed to look like this and it goes okay it doesn't Fair know enough. what the data is. It does. It, it yeah. can't understand what it is. It can't understand what it's doing with it. It just spits out a output and says, "Hey, is this right?" And you say, "Yeah, okay." Then I'm gonna do everything uh, and make it look like this. And if by some chance we we sort of miss something in the results, and we still say it's correct, it's gonna give out continuously results that look the same. Uh, one great example was um, they made a machine learning system that uh, tests for uh, um, MRI uh, scans. It tests them for cancer. And in some cases, it did have a quite a large uh, success rate at finding it. But in some cases, um, because some of the slides, the slides that were made specifically for the AI machine were, they had a, a yellow tag at, at, at the bottom. It would uh, identify all uh, the uh, slides with yellow tags as having cancer in them all of them yeah yeah this is uh, this is the best uh, uh, place to start um so that we can make it it's uh, the 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 ai thing calling things ai is basically marketing yeah. um and it, it's marketing both in the sense of uh making it um, somewhat easier for most people to grasp what it is, but also making those same people afraid of what it is. Um, because most people's um, uh, correlation with AI is Skynet. That's the Terminator. That, that, that's what they go. Dun, dun, but dun. but what yeah? But what Unicom said is completely completely correct. The these tools, these, uh, th this technology we are developing, not him and myself, but humanity in general, uh, at least at the moment, um, has nothing to do with um, any sort of intelligence as we perceive it. Because um, adding on to what Unicom said, we, we as humans still don't know how our intelligence actually works. It's not like Oh, we know we have a clear understanding of how it works and we're just going to try to replicate it and do that in a computer. That's why we see all of these different sort of approaches to, uh, from, uh, machine learning, but initially we started just with brute force and then we're going down to machine learning 
and then and now we're into the into the realm of uh mimicking patterns basically that's that, that's what all of these most of these uh publicly available ai thingies um we do need that i think we should just call them ai thingies um uh, not even pseudo ai this is what they do they you you just give them a lot of data and they squint at it really real hard, hard. And they, 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 this is what they do. This is what the, the things do differently is that the, the algorithms through which they create patterns, that's, that's kind of unclear. I don't know if it's as unclear for us as the, uh, end consumer as it is for the, uh, for the creators. Uh, but it sometimes feels like the the, the way in which they, uh, they 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 create patterns is, well, to be honest, alien. It has nothing to do with actual human intelligence or any other living creature intelligence. So yeah, what they do is they mimic. Their their mimics, you know, come holy oh my fuck. God. Shit, I managed to get D&D into a discussion about. Oh, we're gonna talk about D&D and AI later on. But yes, <laughs> these these fuckers are the mimics. If this thing is going to turn into an alien and kill me during this video, then it means the mimics have won already. Yes, they're mimics, man. Fuck. But uh, uh, that aside, that realization aside, this is what they do. They, it's it's even it it's a low, it's a downgraded version of monkey see, monkey do, because um, they don't have the actual live intelligence, uh, actual intelligence of a monkey or a chimp or an ape, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that, that's something that it's good to start from. Um, and on the other hand, it does seem that the marketing works in general, it works. Yeah, it's where in terms of marketing, we're at the, the blockchain coffee company. That's the level where somebody added blockchain to their name, uh, like I don't know, what was it, eight years ago. And their uh, stock price just shot up. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we're at the same stage right now. It's hopefully it, it won't lead to fatalities. I mean, okay, Tesla already is doing that, but hopefully uh, people will understand that AI isn't really working currently. So don't put your faith in an AI powered car probably not a good idea oh yeah for the for the very foreseeable future all of these things will need and require a lot of human input um just to make sure that start to, that sort of shit doesn't happen that much um also it should be noted that um all of these uh chat gpt stuff that we're using and whatnot they are still uh, the the data they work on the data that they are fed and uh, it's still humans that do that it's not like i mean sure some of them have some amount of access to the internet and they can scrape the internet that's fair enough but it's still humans on the back end that will uh, go through weird prompts um not so ethical slash moral prompts that the chat uh, GPTs uh, encounter and uh, flag them as such. So it's it's kind of like the cloud. Oh, yeah, again, it's somebody else's computer. Again, it's someone else's computer. So the AI is uh, kind of like the cloud for humans, basically. It's just like a bunch of other humans um, who I don't think are paid that much because I oh god no. I have. I have the strange feeling they're there from some third world countries um, that are meant to, uh, you know, flag our experience with the uh, thingy uh, that is basically just uh, eating up the data we give it as well, because that's part of the contract. You use it for free, but it gets to use your data. Oh, this is still... Um... I mean, hopefully, uh, the AI that's the data that's being fed to this system is is flagged uh, at least appropriately. But uh, if in some cases it has access to the unfiltered internet, 
It's going to give you all sorts of stupid, stupid results for any question that you have. Uh, in some cases, it, it can be the good kind of stupid. For example, there was a GPT-3 um, bot a while ago, uh, before Open uh, Open GPT, um, and I uh, I asked it to give me a story about an actor and a gerbil, and it knew. It knew exactly what I was talking about. If if there's people watching this video now that are innocent enough to not know about Richard Gere and the gerbil, then you're in for some wild times on the internet if you Google that. So... I have to, I have to yeah. say that, that there's no evidence that the story with the gerbil is true. It's, it's just something that the internet invented. But yeah. because of it's uh, you know um, widespread and the fact that it'd be kind of weird for him to deny it because you then kind of get into your head why is he denying something so ridiculous yeah well he did it that's the, the that's the best approach uh, when it comes to this also i don't even i'm considering his age and the 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 time of the internet when that uh internet myth appeared i just i i just don't think he's aware of it yeah. i just i doubt i heavily doubt he's aware well <laughs> chat gpt is aware of it well of course uh, that would be i've never asked it about uh not probably knows memes and shit like the badger oh i asked that the uh, the implementation that's in bang who wrote tale of doom and apparently my name is alex I asked it to give me a summary of Tale of Doom. It it came up with, with sort of the plot of uh, the D and D movie. Ah, well, it did. You, did you say? Did you tell it like Tale of Doom, the book? Yeah, wrote written ah, by okay. me. That was released in two thousand fifteen and so on. Okay, you gave it enough data. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that every time I told it it was wrong, it got mad at me and wanted to change the subject. Well, that's pretty human. Yeah. Although that, that's that's not that human because if when they get when someone gets mad, they kind kind of tend to double down, not necessarily change the subject. Like a, a more uh, a, a more well-adjusted human will try to change the subject, I guess. So yeah, it does um, this uh, this phenomenon you're describing is called uh, hallucination, basically. Or lying. The, yeah, the the AI is apparently again quotes uh, the AI thing is tend to uh, hallucinate a lot of shit. Now, when the uh, the Google Deep Dream used to just hallucinate dog noses everywhere, it was cute. Yeah. Now it's that... hallucinating conspiracy theories that uh, the Jews are out to get you. Which isn't good. That's not a good yeah. thing to have out there. It yeah, regardless the of... Uh, a bit more. Yeah, regardless which uh, nationality or ethnicity or minority is, or majority is in that, um, in, is in that particular uh, brackets. But let's also, um, that aside, um, recently, very recently actually, uh, to us recording this video, uh, we got um, some news from NVIDIA yeah they showed us uh, they showed us a cute uh, uh, a nice looking uh, cutscene clip gotta, gotta say it's it it looks good it's rendered real well um that uh they say implies uses a, a bunch of ai uh, yeah, the from way that the... it presented that made you believe that yeah. everything in that video in that clip was ai generated the wording was misleading to say the least um, yeah, so um, y whether you've seen it or not, it's basically a first-person um, perspective going into a ramen shop. Looks a lot, looks very cyberpunky. I gotta say, the the both the game and the actual fiction subgenre. And uh, you talk to uh, this um, uh, chef there about stuff and you talk with him in the in the stiltiest and most grammatically correct way possible that is c 
kind of cringe to listen to to be honest it's not it's not that bad to read because if you read it when you read it in your in your in your mind you just skip to i have been here for an entirety of time you just i've been here for a while yo uh you kind of you kind of redact you kind of edit you do some internal editing even when you read generally but uh having to listen to that woof um granted i do think the audio i saw the text is obviously the the text is the simp the 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 main thing that is generated they generated i'm not sure maybe the voice i think the voice might have also been generated uh because this is a thing that can be done now um again going back to the mimicking thing they are the, these uh this software seems to be pretty good at um, editing and modulating sound, uh, especially um, even when it comes to human voices. Maybe there's still some time until they get tone and nuance and those inflections right. But for something like, let's say, Darth Vader, who uh, James Earl Jones licensed his voice to be used uh, perpetually, I think, I'm not, I doubt it has like a time span on it, which means a limit, which means basically, uh, Darth Vader is going to sound the same till the end of civilization, more or less, um, for something like that, uh, it, the, 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 the technology is good enough right now. And there are other, um, potential applications and complications, which even though they're not there yet, as Unicom said, you the, the their announcement would make you think that everything was AI generated and probably most likely it wasn't. Oh no, it, it wasn't like it. So the way they presented it, again, made you think that everything was made by AI because technically to a point it was. The, the RTX series of video cards has ray tracing in it, which is enabled via the ray tracing cores and the, more importantly, the tensor cores. To get the real-time ray tracing working with, uh, you know, the, the proper number of rays so that all the light comes out the way it should, is still basically impossible. So they have a reduced number of rays, like barely any, technically speaking. So the, uh, the tensor cores just uh, squint at that one ray and then, uh, you know, approximate what it would have looked like if there were like a hundred rays around it. That's what the machine learning algorithm does to make ray tracing work in real time. That's the AI part they were referring to when they, were, when they say that the, the rendering, the, the scene is rendered by AI. It's not AI, it's just a bunch of matrices being multiplied by themselves a bunch of times. Well, technically, AI is in a way that. But it's not that kind of AI. So uh, that scene wasn't made by somebody saying to a microphone or tapping to a prompt, hey, build the uh, uh, cyberpunk bar scene, uh, insert uh, NPC shop owner who is being swindled by some gangsters and so on. Then what they showed was an AI system that uh, could understand the, the what the player was saying to the, the character and then spoke back, you know, talked back and at the same time triggered some animations with the hands and stuff like that. What they basically showed was a Skyrim mod because there are Skyrim mods that do this already. They've been doing it for I think since last year since ChatGPT came out. They've been mm. plugging that stuff into Skyrim now. Skyrim is sort of the um what was the uh, the name of the city in uh, uh I forget the name. The name of the city in, in your master, not the not uh, the sprawl, uh, Hengsha or something like that. You know, a city where there were basically no laws uh, preventing uh, development or uh, you know something that would impede uh, development in terms of copyright or uh, ethics restrictions, and everybody just went nuts. That's Skyrim for game development, essentially. At this point, it's something that people go into mod the crap out of it and at some point that's going to be spun off into its own game or its own feature or its own something else 
And uh, NVIDIA looked at what people were doing in Skyrim and said, yeah, yeah, you can use our system to do that. You don't have to use like three different, it's, it's sort of based on three different things. It's the AI uh, language interpreter that translates what you're saying to text. There's chat GPT. And then there's the voice synth that takes the mm. result from chat GPT and plucks it out of the, the NPC's uh, mouth hole. And then NVIDIA also added the, uh, the triggers for the, uh, the animations the gesticulations which, yeah so uh, as uh, as we were saying earlier uh, it's mainly marketing that being said i do think that at a certain point uh, the technology will reach uh, the level where you could more more or less do what you just said it should do Maybe not, maybe not just from a quick prompt, but uh, it, it might allow you to do um, maybe uh, like modular building, modular design, like basically gives you blocks of uh, self, uh, self-standing self um, functions, self, self-standing sort of AI things that you can just place in a, basically in a sandbox. Uh, that's still most likely several years away, and even when it and, and even when that will happen, um, I think it's gonna be um, pretty expensive, at least at the beginning, to use. Um, it's gonna be but, tied to somebody's cloud and yeah, have a monthly subscription. But that will cause a fair bit of disruption in the in in the gaming industry in general. Yes, yeah, so um, a bunch a, of yeah. A is going to have well, AI is having an effect on the games industry already. Uh, we've seen Ubisoft announcing that they're using a system to help write text for quests for characters and so on. And I don't, I I can't imagine that this is the first time they've used it because I've played The Crew. Humans could not have written the crew. Ah, yes, that that, that will not get. Well, maybe maybe it was written by uh, what you what you call yeah, by, uh, version zero point one of Chat GPT could have written the crew. Um, depends if they had access to it. I don't know. I mean, they could have. No. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so there is uh, there is that. There is also that uh, the the pump that Blizzard announced that they have developed their own sort of uh, concept art illustration um, uh, generator uh, sort of thing, which it, I, I guess okay. They do have they do have a particular style, and I imagine they have enough um, enough stuff to scan for it to do for uh, something to do that and to maintain their um, um you know their particular stylistic approach but that's gonna that's get that's definitely gonna put some people out of some jobs for quite a while well i mean considering the way that most studios work those people would have been fired anyway uh, the moment that they made their uh, artwork they were going to yeah. get canned either way. Now, there's less of a chance of them being hired, being hired back. So that's that's the mm. bigger issue. And um, that's also an issue that's actually been, um, that's also current. But I don't know how much uh, this particular part of the, um, the writer strike is actually talked about in general. Like, uh, there's... For a couple of weeks now, maybe three weeks, I think, the there's been a major writer strike uh, happening in the U.S., which you may or may not be aware of. We probably are if you consume any type of American-based uh, uh, anything. Um, the last major um, writer strike was in 2007, and if you look back uh, in what happened in 2007 and afterwards. Um, the last time a major uh, writer strike uh, happened, uh, that basically opened the burst the dams to reality TV, and we've been uh, living through that hellish flood ever since. Well, some of us, I kind of stopped consuming a lot of media, some a lot of like uh, 
motion picture uh, media uh, several years ago. Games, different discussion. But, sorry, diverged. But, uh, so uh, the main thing, the main problem uh, that they have right now is that um, they don't get any sort of money from streaming, which is fucked up. And, but the second sort of issue is that they see the propensity, the, the ease with which the suits can replace them with uh, chat GPT type stuff. And one of the things, one of the major things they are asking for is to ensure that all, um, all TV shows, because um, I think this is for TV shows, not movies, or um, no, TV shows and movies will have a certain amount of people, of human writers hired for their writing room, uh, just so as a means to basically protect their, um, their, their profession, industry, basically, their, job, their, 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 their craft, their love, their, uh, their, their, what they do as humans, basically to live within a capitalist society. And this is where the problem stems from, because even if they do get, uh, some sort of compromise at this point, eventually, most likely money will win out and they will get steadily, um, replaced unless, uh, as, uh, Unicom and myself have been talking about, uh, in private and kind of what started the idea to record this, since we're both big Dune fans. Um, unless we have, uh, an equivalent of the Butlerian Jihad and, uh, there is, we, 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 as a society, as, uh, we, we, ma we make some hard decisions, uh, regarding our, uh, future development, but, uh, I doubt that's going to happen under the, uh, under the capitalist society of America, especially system of America. Very but yeah, no, I just, yeah, I just wanted to mention that th this, there are some organizations, um, that you might not think, uh, are related to, um, game development, but they are writers are a big part of games, especially in the past, I don't know, two decades, let's say, uh, when, when the story of, when story and narrative aspect and character relationships and stuff like that started to appear in games much more so than previously. And this is a direct sort of threat to those types of, uh, creative jobs. That's the thing is whenever, um, whenever we think about, or we, at least until recently, and whenever we thought about, um, automation or robots or, uh, this type of thing, we generally thought about the really difficult, um, backbreaking routine jobs that would disappear, that would be, uh, automated in some way or another. And some of that has happened. That's, that's valid. That's true. But we never really thought of, um, the creative side of things being so quickly taken under, um, under the, uh, would be so quickly overtaken basically by this idea of, um, automating it somehow. Now there, there was a warning are. about this in the book, 1984 <laughs> specifically. Well, yeah. Where, uh, the entire world is, uh, the, the main source of entertainment in that world is pornography written by machines. Hmm. And we're getting Just, to that point. But to be honest, to be honest, I think, um, I think you can write, uh, I think, uh, chat GPT can write a pretty decent, uh, porn script. Yeah, although it, it, it probably write a better book than 50 shades of gray. Oh yeah. But book. Yeah, sure. Uh, obviously, but anyway, but, and that's the, and that's the back to what I was saying. That's the problem that, that there's an inherent problem with uh, basically outsourcing creative work to a thing that not only do you not understand, but that it doesn't understand what it's doing. 
because that's why it can only mimic and uh, see patterns and basically just pukes them out in slightly different orders or slightly different uh, um, uh, perspectives uh, because it cannot reason. It doesn't mm -hmm. have creativity. It cannot have creativity because, and now we're going to the much more philosophical discussion, is that it cannot have compassion. And uh, creativity, regardless how you want to look at it, is very much connected to us uh, being uh, touchy-feely, basically, being emotional uh, beings, having uh, thoughts and feelings and that sort of stuff. And there is a there is a definite connection there, uh, which again we're not a, we can't quantify because we we're just not there yet. But there is that there is a distinct problem in trying to um, basically fit uh, the 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 square uh, the square peg of human creativity into the round hole of automating it basically. So uh, uh, that 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 is uh, that is one problem that depending on where in the world you live could some stuff could be done to protect but even in such places where there is a more where there's more accent put on the wealth the actual welfare of the citizens and uh, their happiness and whatnot not just making money um i think even there there's gonna be uh, a particular point in time where they might not be able to outcompete the places that don't impose any sort of limits or regulations on their use of AI, which will fail catastrophically occasionally, surely, but will also succeed, you know, brilliantly. Equally as catastrophically for everybody else. Yeah. Um, so, um, I don't know exactly like, and that's where the Butlerian Jihad thing, uh, can, can happen or not. Uh, because even now there is, that's the thing. There are loopholes within these, all of these, um, technologies. Um, I recently saw, I recently watched something cause I looked into it after we were talking about it, you know, and there was, uh, I, I kept, um, I was I was keeping track of the the Alpha Go, if you remember. Yeah, when they the, defeated Lee Sedol in. Uh, what, yeah. Was it 2018. Uh, wait. Oh, sorry. I think in 2018, uh, that's when they. Yeah, uh, yeah, recently. I think it was in 2018. So basically, Alpha Go was kind of like uh, the deep blue for those who are older in the audience, and I'm pretty sure many of you are. Uh, basically, the deep blue of uh, playing Go. And um, Go is uh, most one of the one of humanity's most ancient games, um, and it's fairly it's relatively simple to understand the basics of, but it's kind of difficult to actually get into it because I tried, and um, it has numerous more potential possible moves than chess does. So basically, you cannot brute force your way through Go. You could brute force your way through chess. It yeah. is that that's that's basically what Deep Blue did back in when was that ninety six, ninety seven, yeah, maybe really a long time ago. Around around that time, so basically that's what Deep Blue did more or less back then, just brute force uh, through uh, beating Kasparov. Um, but y there are so many uh, potential muta uh, permutations in Go that you we don't have, not even now. We do not have the the, the calculating uh, power to just brute force your way through those and win. Uh, anyway, so uh, they created AlphaGo, which uh, beat the grandest of grandmasters. It made the guy uh, retire. It's like fuck this shit. This isn't. It's literally no human can uh, compete with this. And uh, some people, uh, some uh, scientists, uh, like uh, saw that and they were like, hmm, "Challenge accepted." So what they, what these uh, people did is like they also used software, which is wonderfully nice, poetic, 
and they analyzed AlphaGo's strategies. And then they developed a strategy, they developed their own AI meant to literally combat AlphaGo. And eventually after running who knows how many millions of uh, games, they came up with a strategy that then a human learned and then the human beat AlphaGo. And I believe the strategy because was so stupid that the machine would have never thought of it. No, no, it's not that the, the strategy is so basic that a human would have seen it instantly because a human understands the purpose of the <laughs> game. The computer doesn't understand the purpose of the game. It just understands putting things in a particular order leads to success or leads to failure. It doesn't understand the meaning. That's the, and that's the thing. That's the, that's the major difference. They do not, these, these, uh, I want to call them tools, but some people get a bit obfuscated when, no, they're, it's tools. These tools do not have reason, cannot reason. They do not understand in any sort of way, not even in the way in which a puppy dog or a cat understands things. So that's why that, uh, th these loopholes obviously exist. Cause again, keep in mind, these things are still made by humans. Now, when AI starts making their own AI, that's when we're going into some, that, that that's when we're going into some shit. There is some truly alien unknown territory. Uh, but uh, we still have some, we still have some time until then. Although there have been several uh, weird experiments where uh, various AI started developing their own language and talking between themselves and uh, weird, weird, weird stuff will happen. Cause again, even I, and this is why I was saying earlier, I'm not even sure the humans are completely aware of what they're building. Like they might be building something to go from A to B to C, but uh, unbeknownst to them, the, the, the thing might just jump from A to X, uh, doing from, so who knows what, uh, what types of, um, again, I'm I was going to say mental gymnastics, but it's not human. Transistor so. gymnastics. Ah, yes. The result Quantum would be uh, to, to any of those in the audience that have played, I have no mouth and I must scream. You're probably screaming right now, right? <laughs> that's, uh. Prob well, hopefully that's not where we're heading towards because it would be yeah. kind of bad. It would kind of suck. It, it now, it does and it will. So I also want to bring in this perspective, you know, come of uh, change is just generally scary um, for most people, and generally the natural response, natural human response, is to um, block change or do it as slow as possible that's a value that's valid not always possible because of other um other energies out in the world and by that i mean capitalism basically and the way in which i see this um trend let's call it of um, these tools being used is I don't know how revolutionary it's going to be. It might be, I think, I think it's actually going to be somewhere between, uh, e evolutionary and revolutionary. I think the closest, um, thing I can sort of think of is either, um, industrial looms, the switch from manual to industrial looms. Maybe that's not that impactful, although at the time that put a ginormous percentage of people out of work. And there were also the Luddites who, to prevent, uh, you know, being put out of a job, they started trashing the looms. And then again, the government made that uh, punishable by death because money, um, as I was saying, or it's more of, um, horses to cars. Which again is something that the government started killing people over because the cars were uh, taking the space that used to be occupied by humans on the streets and instead of saying, hey, maybe we should get cars to be safer, the uh, 
gave to the uh, auto company's lobbying of, hey, if you're on the road with a car, you should die. It's a, it's a marketing strategy. The idea that you have to cross at a crosswalk, that's a marketing strategy created by Ford, by his Fordness. Brave New World. We, we're getting to Another, uh, so many, so many literal yeah. references. That's a different book. Yeah. Um, oh, so I, I think that's... Yeah. I'm going to put a small tangent. Have you seen the adaptation of Brave New World? No, I haven't. Again, I haven't watched uh, modern movies in something like five years. It's good that you haven't because... Um, uh, they blame the uh, in the adaptation instead of blaming you know the the failure of society or the dystopia that it's become on on capitalism on you know on his Fordness, they blame it on an AI. An uh, AI did it, not capitalism. So I think that series was sort of built up as um, as a shield to deflect um, the oncoming events. You know, don't blame a thousand people being fired a day on uh, capitalism. Blame it on a chat GPT script that can't even tell you what's your name, even though you've told it 50 times. That's going to take that a is, job. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I haven't. I've, I've only watched very few things lately because I'm way more focused on just playing video games and making videos, making deep dive videos about video games. Um, where was I? I forgot. What the fuck was I saying? Uh, well, oh, yeah. People getting killed by cars. No, that's you were saying, but it, looms. Technically, yeah, looms cars. So I think, I think that's that's maybe the closest sort of um, thing in time that we might have, like horses, carriages, transportation. Uh, they were they were everything for hundreds of years. The entirety of uh, like society developed around horses. There were. Um, most people, um, even some of the poorer farmers could sometimes could have one or maybe two horses and whatnot. And then just like that, within a generation, they disappeared. Literally generation, it was 15 to 20 years, which is mm -hmm. arguably what the generation is counted as. Within 15 to 20 years, no, I mean, Obviously, they were still in rural areas, but in the urban areas, they disappeared. Stables stopped existing uh, as a thing. Like, yeah, you have to imagine, you have to uh, imagine, basically, not necessarily remember that there were particular buildings, there were stables in mm. cities, in places where you could literally go to park your horse. <laughs> and there were people hired to take care of them and whatnot and that sort of stuff. So that was an entire ecosystem of uh, work and jobs that literally disappeared instantaneously. Now, the other side of the coin is that uh, an entirely new ecosystem of work and jobs appeared relating to cars and roads and everything else that has to do with that. Insurance companies that go bankrupt like every other month and drag down the economy with them. That's yeah. Romanian current uh, events for you right there. So there's, uh, there's also that thing, but generally when you're in that transition generation, let's call it, uh, although I don't think this is going to take a generation, this might take arguably less or arguably more, depending on how you look at it during that, that transition spot, it all looks just bad. It's just shit -tastic. Because obviously you can't see, we, we don't know what's going to be the most popular or, or we don't know what work's going to look like in 20 years, much like 20 years ago, no one really saw what jobs and what the works, uh, working environment is going to be like in 2023, 2003, if you think back to 2003. It was like paper was still a lot used everywhere. There was a lot of paper. There's like a movie that is a wonderful movie called Office Space that kind of chronicles the that particular time. Although I don't think it's in 2003. I think it's been, is it earlier than? I than think it's earlier than that. It might be earlier, but you know that that sort of stuff existed for a while. So in 2003, none of this this 
what we're doing right now, fucking sci-fi, even in 2003, pretty much. Yeah, it, the, you could have some teleconference and some amount of telecommuting, but yeah, the average yeah, sure wouldn't have this in 2003. Yeah. Of course, this would have cost um, thousands of dollars then. Oh, I think tens of thousands of dollars back yeah. then with nowhere near the resolution or the lag or the not yeah. the, the lack of lag. No, my camera technically is from that period, but other than that, it, it's <laughs> it's so it's sci fi. Okay, my camera then, my camera then. Um, so yeah, there is also that like we can't we we don't know what's gonna happen, what what life, what um. Uh, society moves on to in 20 years uh, what we what the only thing we can know is the past which again looms and uh, looms to industry and uh, horses to cars and the present which is not optimistically looking from several many uh, reasons uh, technology being arguably the least problematic of them um, that being said, all of that should be said. How about you, Nagam? How about we uh, give our viewers some suggestions on how to actually use something like ChatGPT to enhance their, well, maybe not necessarily their lives, but their entertainment or just make some shit slightly easier? Um, well, I use it sometimes at work um, when I'm bored and I don't want to work to get it to run a, a sort of Dungeons and Dragons style adventure for me where I'm in a party and I just I go around doing stuff and I roll dice I tell it I rolled this dice to check for you know stealth to uh, check for traps I roll combat rolls damage rolls currently I'm in a dungeon where I recruited some kobolds to serve my god of flame and compassion after I beat the crap out of them Mm. So I, I I was very convincing, but also violent, which was you doubly are, convincing according to you the <laughs> violently violently convincing according to the chat GPT DM. I was very a very good leader. Oh okay. And now I'm, I'm going around with a bunch of cobalts, stealing stuff. Hey, look, if you have reclaiming it, stuff for the god. If you have enough cobalts, that's fucking that's like Zergs, man. It's yeah. like you, you, you can swarm a motherfucker. I've only got four so, so far. That's a, that's a great example of what you can do. Um, another one very adjacent to that is I've seen people uh, using um, ChatGPT to role play through video games from a pers from a certain perspective. Um, one advantage, sort of, uh, one benefit of uh, something of a tool like ChatGPT is that it whilst it dumb it does not have any biases well human biases no no no. Uh, in the sense of in the sense of it doesn't have its own, own biases but it has it the ones from the biases. source material uh, it's the yeah, same yeah. problem with, with stable diffusion just uh in stable diffusion or uh, other similar software doesn't have restrictions on it just type um cop beating human it's always going to be a black guy getting the shit kick out of them always that is that is what's most in the in the Western news. Yeah. So it's that that is fair enough. So it doesn't have a personal like your own biases in that sense. So you can tell it to play the game as this sort of character, which you maybe wouldn't play the game, or which you maybe are considering. But even 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 if you set yourself some sort of uh, character traits, you as a human you know filled with compassion and emotion and whatnot you will be you're much more likely to maybe not always stick to the letter of what you uh of what you literally wrote earlier but if you tell the if you tell chat gpt i want to play uh this character like this that the other thing and then you also tell it you give it the dialogue options like hey this has happened boom what do what do you do what do i do and it's just gonna give you the closest answer to what you tell, told it earlier and that can make for a really weird sort of objective which is paradoxical objective role playing 
It will be like yourself watching yourself play the game. Kind of. Kind of a mind fuck, but it's something you can do. You'll have your very own Dixie flatline. Um, so uh, that's I think that's a reference. Uh, so that's that's something you can consider, of course. Um, then there is always the idea of um, something I've used ChatGPT for is um, basically uh, making it easier for me to write uh, cover letters for uh, uh, job applications like that that granted if you apply to something in english although i think ChatGPT works in oh yeah several it, it other can translate languages everything. by now yeah uh, i i give it uh, text to translate it into romanian because i just can't be bothered i've got a i've got a legal detection manual that's 200 pages long to translate mm -hmm. that does not actually that's not part of my job but it's somebody's got to do it so I just feed it the text and then check it that it's okay in it. It does come up with um, with good uh, equivalences for words that don't necessarily have a direct correspondence from English to Romanian, especially when it comes to technical terms like um, I think the the term is a dry technical, hole. Technical terms is arguably easier to yeah. uh, translate because it is that the term dry it hole. The term dry hole, what do you think uh, would mean? Like in a void. In a void, it's a know. dry hole. What? It's, 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 a, it's a hole that is dry. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a non-wet hole. It's a term that comes from uh, oil prospecting where you drill a hole and what you end up with at the bottom is dry. There is no oil there. And it's the same term that's used for leak detection in water systems. You mm -hmm. go to a place, you think that's where the leak is, and you start digging around, and you find nothing. That's a dry hole. So the system understood what it was supposed to be. It ex I asked it, explain this to me. Why did you use this term? And it explained it. And that's a neat thing. It, it can help you understand things. I mean, if, if in itself it understands what it wrote. If. Or, yeah, or if. And uh, that also depends on what it has to uh, take the patterns from if it has enough information for that um something else that can be that uh, you can use chat gpt for which i have used only a little bit because i want to avoid using it uh basic coding you can use it for basic coding and uh not only that but you can actually use it to, to basically explain stuff mm -hmm. Um, let's say you have a project of whatever and you have the text, you have the information, but it's just like Unicom said, maybe it's like in a gigantic um, a book and maybe you don't have time to read the entire book or maybe you're interested in this chapter or whatnot. You can ask it exactly what you need to know in order to get your shit done. Um, that granted, caveat. Um, a grain of salting everything and caveating everything you also need to do your due diligence and check stuff it will um, routinely if... say stupid things yeah but when it comes to stuff like that is a clear cut like coding um you can let you can instantly test what it says if it's fine it's... it helps if you've got the paid version of chat gpt which has the plugins for all other stuff like Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha, which is a uh, an extremely good uh, mathematics uh, library, which you can actually use the Wolfram Alpha by itself. It's It's been doing the, the chat GPT thing for math for like 15, 20 years by now. You could just ask, hey, what's the, the radius of a circle? And it's, uh, yeah, do this calculation. And here's an example. Here's a calculator. Just plug in the numbers. Wolfram Alpha is amazing. If you're into if you're into that sort of thing, um, something else that I've um, I've used it for uh, personally is to reward things, and just for me to see what it looks like, and that can be really useful, um, just for your own um, not not to use it. So okay, never copy paste what job, what Chat GPT tells you. Uh, that's a bad idea in general. Uh, everything we're talking about basically is use what it says as 
uh, suggestions more or less. And it's and I found it most useful when I use it basically as a sounding board or something to bounce ideas off of. Uh, for instance, I'll give it a text I just wrote and I'm like, rewrite this uh, for a high school level or rewrite this for an academic level. And you'll see uh, different perspectives on, or rewrite this if you give it, if you tell it to rewrite this um, uh, for a YouTube video, it's it's going to be the going to be the very stereotypical hey and good morning guys how welcome to my channel blah blah blah, blah. bullshit bullshit bullshit. it's funny it, it is funny um but you can also have it uh, do that and i'll be honest i have used it uh, on several of my uh, scripts to reward things sometimes i just write stuff uh, not necessarily uh, train of thought stuff but you know whatever and even even after I go back and edit it and make it fluid, it's still maybe clunky, maybe still a bit clunky. And I'll just give it the text and tell it, uh, rewrite this, uh, but make it more fluid, uh, make it easier to understand, uh, that sort of stuff. And what it spews out, again, I don't use that. I look at what it spews out. I compare it to my shit and I see whether or not I am actually satisfied with at least parts of what it says for me to then implement and rewrite my own stuff. So basically I rewrite, if, if I use something, I rewrite chat GPT's rewrite of my writing. Um, I do a, I do a double, I do a double layer. Um, so yeah, it, it can also be used by, uh, people such as ourselves, by people who write a lot, um, to make our, uh, lives a bit easier not necessarily easier but maybe i i think uh, it, it improves it can enhance uh, some of our writing just because it might make it a bit faster for us to think about other stuff that we're writing obviously the flip of uh, this is expect a lot a lot a lot of basically bot content i mean if it if yeah. if you if you haven't uh, seen enough bot made videos on YouTube up until now, expect them, expect to see some, uh, expect them to get uh, arguably to get them to sound better, but not necessarily to look better because they would, if they're completely generated, they're just going to have random videos, random images. Uh, and the text will literally be just the blandest shit and conspiracy theories because that's what that's what that's what catches that's yeah what... um we were in a race to the bottom for a long time when it comes to internet content it's a race to the bottom whoever can put it out for the lowest possible cost wins and the because, more and the yeah. and the more you can put out the lowest cost highest volume it doesn't matter what you're saying it matters that you say it as loudly as possible and as often as possible to drown out everybody else all this in service of getting a fraction of a tenth of a hundredth of a cent per view. And with with enough content like that, you could make a bunch of money. Usually what would happen is that stuff like that would be outsourced to countries where people don't get paid a lot. And now uh, that cuts out even those people. It's just mm -hmm. going to be a bunch of entities, maybe media companies, just putting out an insane number of videos articles listicles tweets posts everything that's just meaningless garbage and it's going to drown out any sense of discourse any sense of discussion on the internet there will be no more content on the internet soon just to see of noise by the way noise the great song by the band nightwish which is literally just about this endless noise it's about the cacophony we mentioned that in your Discord a while ago, of yeah. uh, absolute garbage that is flooding uh, everything. It, it's decoying the human voice. It's how the song puts it. It's not a human voice. It's a decoy of it. It just drives you insane. That's where we're going. Now, if you're if you're more among the younger crowd, you will, you will have the ability to discern what's something made by a machine and something made by a human. 
because you know machines tend to use particular styles of talking and writing uh, older people will not get that older people really don't understand even visual effects to a point my dad keeps showing me videos of this plane amazingly landing with one wing even though the plane is just like a, a, a flying brick like there there is no elasticity to it it was made like i think with um what you call it uh, 3d Mar 3d max 2003 or something but to him it looks real for some reason he doesn't have the context of seeing better model planes but because the video is grainy enough, it looks real to him. You're going to have that amplified a million times every second for the next couple of years. It's going to be maddening on the internet. Yeah, especially with the deep fakes getting oh, as, yeah. as, uh, oh, God, yeah. scary as they are. Because there was a time, there was a time, kids, when you could just say, uh, well, I've seen or heard x person uh do or say things but with deep fakes that 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 one kind of goes out the window um un unless you were actually there it's gonna become very difficult to separate what actual the human what's what what's real basically and what's fake there's also the reverse of this, where if you say something utterly stupid in, let's say, 2018, then in court you could say, oh, well, that was a deep fake. If your name is Elon Musk, you will totally do that. Oh, likely. Even if that you were is. surrounded by like a thousand people who all saw you and heard you say that. Hey, um, I always say... Uh, and I've always said for many years that uh, reality isn't reality, it's uh, perception is reality. So, uh, hey, it, it, it's, uh, again, like you said, it's basically a game of uh, numbers, uh, more or less. Uh, the more is the, the more people perceive something as such, the more it kind of becomes reality, unfortunately, or yeah. fortunately, but uh, lately it's kind of more to the unfortunately. Poor Richard Gere. Mm. Anywho. Um, so those are a couple, a few um, ways of uh, that uh, suggestions that you could use um, something public. Uh, granted, okay. So uh, final caveat, much like with everything on the internet, um, if you use ChatGPT, you need to be at peace with the idea that it is going to scrape your data. It's gonna take your data, whatever it is that that they look for, like. That's something that uh, most of us, I think, um, are kind of at peace with, even if uneasingly so. Um, because we do use uh, various social media platforms and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, keep that one in mind as well. Uh, you can always you can always decide not to use it, just to protect that, whatever that part of data is. But if you're on the internet watching this right now, even if it's with a burner account, uh, yeah, also unlike the internet, uh, there may be ways to run equivalents of ChatGPT locally. Uh, mm. They're maybe not as good. Uh, there's a couple of them out there. I, I can't really give you details on them since I haven't used them. I have used uh, Stable Diffusion locally, which uh, on a 6 gigabyte video card, not that great, but it can do wondrous things. For example, it can take my sketches for logos and just add details. I tell it, hey, this is a letter... I made a local for a fake video uh, gaming website, like uh, True mm. Gaming News or something like that. I just put like the letters in a strange uh, way, and I told, yeah, make this video games. And it started turning some of the letters into controllers, and it actually looks good. It looks usable, which is a neat thing to have. But locally, you can do a lot of stuff locally. Uh, just go to GitHub and look up local version of chat gpt local version of stable diffusion local versions of everything it's much better to do it locally uh, that is if you have the, the proper hardware than it is to have all your data being scraped up by some company that's going to probably sell itself for 500 billion dollars and then uh i don't know make murder bots for the pentagon at least it's for the pentagon and not the kremlin I mean, I'm just basing this on who's are aimed at me currently. 
So mm-hmm. if you're in a different part of the world, just just imagine I said something else, something that's that makes you happy. See that? See that's what uh, that's what what we could use um, an AI for. Uh, depending on region, it would replace conflict areas. When we when we <laughs> mention locations, it can just replace conflict areas. Or they could do what they did in the last uh, Top Gun movie, and they they just go to nondescript country. They never mention who they're non-descript, attacking. Yeah, nondescript country stand. Yeah, exactly. The pilots are always wearing helmets, so they don't offend anybody. So it's not China. So they're using you know, out of stock American, uh, you know, fighter jets. They're not China or Iran. Okay, that's, but they're not China. That's fun. Okay. You need to they they you need to skirt around uh, sensitive um, uh, things. Okay, so that's about. I think I think we've had enough. Uh, mostly doom and the gloom. I mean, uh, it's not going to be all doom and gloom. Um, I mean, in terms of developing video games, sure, it, it may cost some jobs in terms of writing because, honestly, if you've played enough MMOs, and how many of them have you read that quest text or the the dialogue from the NPCs? If, be honest, if you have played Bethesda games. Are you really all that, you know, uh, familiar with the intricacies of the dialogue of five different characters with five different voices saying the same line about the Mojave Desert being really, uh, you know, uh, hot or getting a shot in the air in the knee? Do you think that can't be done by an AI, like, just like that, and you, you wouldn't notice? You, there's some things that could be done by ChatGPT that you would not notice, absolutely at all. So that 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 would require people to, you know, in order to get it noticed, to sort of increase the the level of quality of those. But that would defeat the point of them being filler. So you will have less filler, or the same amount of filler made by AI. Or even more filler made by AI that's maybe a tiny bit better. But that filler content is always going to be there. If you like filler, you will probably still won't notice if it's made by AI. If you don't like it, you will not notice. If you're really into it and are really trying to dive deep into the filler of the game to see if there's anything in there and still find nothing, you maybe still won't notice because that's filler. It's usually meaningless. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's valid. The difference being that the AI filler is cheaper than the human filler. Oh yeah, it's basically <laughs> going to generate. Ubisoft already does that with its with its tool. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so uh, we'll have to much like with uh, a lot of other things um, in in life. Uh, sometimes you just have to wait and see. And uh, that's uh, that's kind of where we are with this. Um, I do think it is going to be um, unless unless there's some uh, severe um, severe as in uh, very sturdy and solid uh, regulations put in place uh, against the use of AI, this the sort of AI in whatever industries or applications. Um, we will see it everywhere, especially on the places where uh, the, on the most public of uh, places, you know, mm-hmm. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, those yeah, sort of places. That's that's where uh, this kind of, I wouldn't say necessarily roadblocks, but at least, hey, you maybe, maybe uh, think before you set up an AI to post a thousand death threats to marginalized people. Uh, type of system I mean maybe have something to not uh, let people do that en masse non-stop until the end of eternity but without you know uh, negatively affecting other stuff like for example at my company I've been in several AI development uh, you know uh, projects to make System that, systems that detect uh, water loss based on uh, uh, sort of an indexing of pressure sensors in a network. Like uh, if, if there's five pressure sensors in a network and they 
all indicate a certain amount of pressure uh, because of a leak there's going to be an index in the background that was generated by uh, somebody running an algorithm for machine learning on a supercomputer for like a week it took a long time and it's going to use the, the data from those sensors to basically look up in a giant index and see oh yeah if this sensor is at this level this at this level and this at this level it means that somewhere in this area there may be a leak go look there and that's what we do it's a nice system to have oh yeah there's obvious uh, there's obvious beneficial there's many potential beneficial um applications much like you said um earlier um in some cases at least uh, currently uh, it, it does seem that overall um ai trained to uh, see and diagnose different sort of uh, maladies is considerably faster and more accurate than humans are provided it's properly trained yeah of course and obviously humans will still have to check but having that sort of um much faster uh, much easier to access diagnosis will lead to a lot of lives being saved especially when we're talking about things like uh, cancer growths and all kinds of all, all, all manner of other types of um weird little things that maybe the hu may, maybe it escapes a uh, human's uh, uh, observation so there is there, there's plenty of, of benefit there is also we can think about um um eventually getting to the place where uh, people can get voices replaced like in case they have uh, damage to the vocal cords and whatnot and maybe mimicking what they sounded like previously there is uh, there's just the, the the as as per usual as with most um revolution evolutionary uh, technologies the potential benefits are more or less equal to the potential uh not benefits was the was the antonym of benefit catastrophe um, okay fair enough doom uh, yeah doom okay the potential doom um so yeah uh i just i i i felt we um we we were having these discussions on uh my uh discourse server and i thought like you know this would be this would make uh, an interesting um game tales maybe not necessarily particularly about games but it does it is already like uh, you know come said it is already affecting the industry and it will affect it going further uh because it will allow um smaller uh smaller teams to mm -hmm. just focus on if they're making something that is just super gameplay heavy gameplay important they, 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 they can just focus on that uh and spend a little time or maybe but i doubt they'll even hire a contractor for uh to to create the writing uh they're just gonna do it themselves um there is uh there is that which is which kind of sucks for people like me uh who uh are sort of in the industry on that uh, side of things but yeah it is unfortunate uh living through as i said through the transitional generation uh but we'll see what uh, we'll see what the future has to bring yeah one one thing actually that the this ai revolution isn't really going to bring to video games is better ai because mostly the way that ai in video games works is by playing a different game than you are with different rules than you are uh, only like recently uh, the the same ai that uh, beat lisa doll and uh, and go uh, got uh, taught to play starcraft and i mean play starcraft as if it were a human not as if it were a starcraft ai like a like a unit ai uh, that that saw some uh, some progress and there was a dota one as well but don't expect this kind of ai to go into video games in that sense uh, i've seen people at i think at the uh, level one text uh, podcast which is a great show a great new show you should go watch it better than this one um they uh, were talking about having games where um 
AI agents would interact with each other and, you know, based on what their needs and their resources, they would act accordingly and, you know, evolve on their own. We've had that in games since 96, 97 with Ultima Online and uh, it got disabled instantly because um, those systems are incredibly easy to destabilize and totally destroy by the players. And I mean, super easily. You, you, could, you could take certain aspects of the game to extinction because of that ah yes i know what you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because that's the, the, the that's the um, that's the problem maybe uh one of the problems is that these things uh, the, those systems would only work in a world of um uh, rational reasonable actors and that's that. That's one mistake that many economists do. Humans yeah. are, whilst they are uh, occasionally rational and occasionally uh, reasonable, uh, they're not always rational uh, or reasonable. So they will uh, take make they will make suboptimal decisions, which doesn't compute literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, switching switching over now we're towards the end of the show and I want to uh, bring two things to the attention of the audience and neither is a self plug um, one is that a uh, really cool um, indie RPG that I likened to an indie Dragon Age Origins um, uh, developed by a Romanian team is going to be is going to go into full release in September they initially planned to go into early access uh, this month or this past month, but they decided to just work a bit more on it and just go into full release in September, I think. And that title is Zoria, Age of Shattering. I played the demo and I, I really enjoyed the demo. Yeah, I actually funded them on Kickstarter as well. Oh, yeah, I'm a granted. I'm, I'm also a backer, I think. I think I'm a backer. I'm not sure, uh, but I'm a supporter for sure. Um, cause I played the, I played the demo and I covered it and, uh, it, it, it is very promising. It's party based and there's, uh, what, what I really like is that you can camp. You have like a special camp where, uh, camping uh, feature where you can rest and craft. There's going to be a lot of crafting in it from what I understand. Um, visually it looks good. Uh, it has at least one Fallout reference in it, so uh, uh, it's an audio Fallout reference, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so uh, Zoria Age of Shattering, in case you weren't aware of it uh, up until now, go and wishlist it. <clears throat> it is it is definitely something. If you, I mean, go and wishlist it if you liked, if you like uh, turn-based um, combat uh, CRPGs, that is. Um, so that's one. And the other one, this is, again, this is some of the biggest news that almost no one is reporting. Is it the follow-up uh, reference? The... Yes. <laughs> um, uh, the biggest news is that, uh, none other than Tim Kane, designer of the original Fallout, of the OG Fallout, uh, designer of Arcanum, of Temple of Elemental Evil. For which he's sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, apologize. He's, he's, he's apologizing. He's, he's happy with it, but he's like, eh, it could have been better. He's apologized uh, for it in three different videos. Yes. Vampire also, Bloodlines. Oh, yeah. There's a story in one of, his, one of his videos about Temple of Elemental Evil. Uh, they loaned the game to the military and they made an AI to play it. To play it. Yeah. Not the military, uh, Tim <laughs> Kane's team, Tim, yeah, Tim Kane and another dude made, a, uh, made an AI to play it, a random AI basically, yeah. an AI that would just make random decisions. Uh, so uh, I was just in a, a vampire masquerade, no, masquerade or blood, no, bloodlines, I bloodlines. think they, yeah, blood, bloodlines. Um, he also worked on um, uh, the outer worlds a lot, uh, and those are just like the main uh, things. So he has a YouTube channel. Yeah, and there's a just video there. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there. Yeah. If you're a Might and Magic fan, there's a video on his channel that will uh, blow your mind. Oh yeah, there is. Uh, there is the. So he talks about. 
his career and he's been doing this for 30 fucking years by now Holy and uh, if you're into uh rpgs especially the types of stuff that uh, myself and unicom are in uh tim kane is basically the uh, one of the uh the, the ogs uh, of the industry I'm going to um, spoil because... the video a bit. He was working on Might and Magic 10, and from what he said, he got it. I mean, at, a, at the level of understanding what the series is, he got it. Like, he directly what? references Lord of Light, which is his favorite book, apparently. Yeah, That's what he was favorite... making. Yeah, so my, uh, he, he, he also talks, besides talking about the things that did ship, he also talks about things that didn't ship. And that's really interesting. Like they were working at Troika, they were working at a post-apocalyptic game. They also had uh, they also had a concept for like entire design documents, basically, for a post-apocalyptic game. Although I think he doesn't have all the the info for that, all the documentation for that. Uh, he also they also worked on uh, Lord of the Rings game on the Arcanum engine. That, engine. That that never uh, never yeah that was just a demo that never made it but anyway so yes uh, Tim Kane uh, has a YouTube channel and I think he posts daily basically yeah and each of his videos are uh, very interesting super enlightening because uh, in one of the videos we also directly find out why he left Fallout Two um, yeah, and that... uh, the changes that sort of because uh, he also talks about some of the basic concepts he came up with in Fallout 1, especially the the reasoning behind the vaults, which is different than the reasoning in Fallout 2 and onwards. Um, it's it's a great source. I think uh, I think I said like the the like Tim Kane is pouring molten gold daily, and very few people. Are reporting on it. There's a couple of uh, specialized RPG places, spaces that report on some stuff, but for uh, old schoolers such as ourselves, it is um, it is must see viewing. It is in general, in general. Um, yeah. So that's uh, the, those are the two things I wanted to um, uh, make clear there, and like the news portion of uh, of our uh, show today. I guess it's about me. That's uh, that'll be it. Actually, uh, I don't have any videos pro programmed to come out like anytime soon. <laughs> it's it's still yeah. But this is a this is another unsuspe unexpected uh, game tales. So yeah. hey, brought to you by vacation time because it's mandatory to have vacation time at the ascension of the yeah, avatar. Don't... Of the avatar, yeah, that would be that would be something special. <laughs> Uh, hey, don't uh, don't argue. Fuck it. Um, yeah, uh, that's about it from us this time. Um, depending on uh, Unicom's uh, schedule, we'll see if and when we can uh, get uh, another one of these uh, done. But uh, hey, you can always find me on my channel. I post more consistently than Unicom. <laughs> Let's just say. Uh, I've just made two, uh, I just posted two major videos. One is a uh, city building iceberg. So if you're interested in city builders, you might want to check out that video. And the other one is uh, a most recent video on what is an RPG, what is CRPG, RPG genre terms. Uh, I go through a, a bit of history uh, with some of them. So uh, yeah. Uh, coming up also more uh, more um, listicles but with very particular sort of themes uh, very not a lot of best of on my channel um, or worst of either or more um, odd sort of listicles that uh, I find interesting well, I guess this will be about it. Uh, I think Shodan's gonna be here in like two minutes to uh, sever our heads and put them on some robot bodies. 
Hopefully, Deep hopefully water. you're ready for that. I mean, I already have my uh, dome shined, uh, so yeah, it, it will reflect it laser is. blasts for any uh, inco incoming hackers. I'll uh, uh, see you again when I see you again, people. Thank you, Stephen, for joining me this fine day. Thank, thanks to the cat for not jumping on the monitor yeah. again. Yeah, it's been silent. Yeah, it, it's daytime, so she's sleepy. Okay. And uh, I guess we'll see you again with another video whenever that's gonna happen. Goodbye, folks. And, oh, happy Pride Month! Hey, yo! Goodbye.